Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to tackle the monster pile of chipboard. I mentioned this in uh, sat chat and you guys were like, yes, we want to see a video on how to use our chipboard. Apparently, I'm not the only chipboard hoarder in the crafty community, so I, I finally feel not so alone. <laughs> Welcome, chipboard hoarders. I have no idea why these, like, <laughs> this mini book is in here. I think... I think I had. I think this was one of the, something I had from a design team once uh, back in the day when I used to be on design teams, and I used to love to do mini books, but I found that they didn't hold up, especially with the kids taking them down off the shelves and and uh, flipping through them. Doesn't matter the brand. Uh, I just any mini books I've ever done. Just they, they just don't take the wear and tear of little kids, you know, using them, which I want them to look at their pictures, right? So I don't know why that's in there. I should give that away probably. Um, so some of you guys didn't know what chipboard was, and chipboard is essentially just like. Um, it's just cardboard. It's just cardboard and um, you could back in the day I would say this was probably about 15 years ago. You could buy these um, These sheets of chipboard and they have different shapes and you could decorate them and use them on uh, mostly scrapbook pages at the time You know it was before card making was really popular, but um, lots of interesting designs uh, We can just kind of look through here. Gosh, I don't know if this is gonna be inter interesting or what this one was just frames So, you know nested frames this actually I think came in like an art exchange box I did with another YouTuber a few years ago. Um, alphabets were always really useful because you know you paint these or glitter these up and use them on scrapbook pages mostly because they're kind of big. Um, of course it would be also really cute if you were doing a birthday card for someone in particular and you could do a monogram. So that's kind of hard to do ahead of time unless because um, then you have to remember to send it to that person specifically. I try to keep my cards a little bit more generic. Now this is just a piece of chipboard. I probably I might have saved this from like a pad of paper or something. So guys, if you don't have chipboard and you're like, oh, I want to play along, but I don't have that and I don't think they make it anymore, like in shapes because, you know, it, the fat is gone. I am behind the times. Um, but you can take cereal boxes and you can die cut them. Most of your thin dies will die cut chipboard. You can even use your electronic cutters and um, if you have software or you have the, uh, the ability in your die cutter to do a repeat cut or use a deep cut blade and whatever, um, whatever die cutter you have, you will be able to cut cereal box and make your own chipboard shapes. Cereal box is thin like this. It's not as thick as this. This would be tough to cart, cut. This would be more for like uh, using a book, like making a book with. That's what I'd probably use that for. But you know, I had a bunch of these different things. I, I bought a big pack. I think it was by Colorbox. And there were alphabets and numbers and shapes. Like I think those are all the same. These are all like the same font. I don't know. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, it's just going to look like a bunch of brown squares. Basically, they're just, I'll punch out one just so you can see. You have to kind of be careful that you don't tear these punch outs. See, that's the kind of the font that it is. And um, yeah, they're kind of neat. Maybe I should just like bag up all the numbers and I don't know. Then it's going to take up more space. I don't know. So there's tags and tabs and leaves and all sorts of different uh, different things. I do like that font. I'll lift it up. You can see that kind of font that it is. It's just kind of like a Times New Roman type of font. It's pretty though. I like it. But you know, I also have a die cutter. So uh, I think that's probably why I haven't gone into getting these. Even when I first got these, I think I had my I think I had my die cutters at that point. Um, there was also like like I have some that I punched out that are just in this little bin here, just random alphabets. I always used to like to mix and match my chipboard alphabets to make funky looking titles. Um, so I've got some there. You always have leftovers though, and I think that's why I prefer to stamp my titles or die cut because then I can have just the right amount instead of having all the leftovers. Now this these might be stickers. These are stickers, but you know what? They started falling off my layouts because the sticker, the, the adhesive was not good. The adhesive would dry out and then not work. So I like the patterns on these. Maybe I will work these into a card and glue them down. Um, so you used to be able to get chipboard stickers. This one was probably from like the Dollar Tree or Target Dollar Spot or something. But I thought they were kind of neat. And um, they're in here because that's where I keep my chipboard to, you know, live for all posterity. I think those might have been Heidi Swap ones. Uh, she had a lot of different ones. And then, oh, I also have die cut alphabets out of glitter paper. And I don't really like this font, so I think this is going to go in the donation bin. I'm just going to stuff it aside right now. I know a daycare that would really enjoy having that. And in fact, what I don't use up, I might just give to a daycare. These are leftovers, like, so, you know, you're doing a project and maybe you had to cut out some extra sheets 
these are just extra um, felt and paper and foam letters. Um, there was this really, this is really cute set of dies that I have. Um, they're by Sizzix, I think, and they do an alphabet. But the neat thing is, you get like an, you get it cuts like a block with the letter in it. So you've got the letter, and then you've got the Audi part. So you get two for one. So I have a bunch of those in here because I saved them. Oh, this is like, it, oh, isn't that a cute? Just a cute little. I think it was a Doodlebug type uh, font. But I think Sizzix made it. I got some alphabet dies once. Like, they were like $5 a set on, uh, I think it was custom crops because they were getting rid of the thick dies. But anyway, um, so I have a bunch of those that I already cut out there. But I have the dies. I can cut them out whenever I need to. So it's not like I really need to hang on to those. And I clearly haven't used them very well. And then, like a crazy person, I saved the, um, remember the game Guess Who? It was it Guess Who or Memory Match? And this one might have been Memory Match. I saved the leftover like punch outs from those board games. Oh, what's it say? Memory match. You know, my kids are almost 17 and almost 19. So um, this has been in the drawer for probably 16 years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man, how did this survive the con of 2017? I don't know. Probably because I didn't dig through this drawer. I probably just said, yeah, chipboard drawer. It's, it's fine. It's small. I can... I can keep it. I loved this font and this color. This was a Heidi Swap uh, alphabet. And I actually, you could see the square. What I'd done was I liked one of the, I needed an extra letter, so I cut around the negative space and used that for a sticker on a scrapbook layout. And then another thing that I bought, so all these ones that are like um, square and brown, like this, all the same size, they were from a, a pack that I got, I think probably at AC Moore by Colorbox. Then all of these were from a tub I can't, it might have been from Around the Block, one of those companies, and they were all just chipboard shapes and chipboard letters and alphabets. It was just kind of random. And, um, and I might have even gone through and given away a bunch, and this is what I decided to keep. So, I don't know. I can't imagine I'm going to use any of these. Uh, so I think a lot of this stuff is going to end up getting donated, but the brown ones, they're just raw cardboard, I thought had a lot of potential. So, I'm going to show you the things that I also grabbed to kind of decorate these with. And of course, the same material as cereal box, so you can go ahead and, you know, save some cereal boxes or cracker boxes and play along at home. So um, I thought it would be fun to decorate these with some acrylic paints. I also grabbed these, um, my little alphabet for like, um, when you do metal, like metal jewelry, you can pound and impress impress art. You can impress the um, the little shapes into your into your metal. It works great on chipboard. So if I want to like put a name or I don't know, put a happy birthday or something like that, say something on the chipboard, I can use those. I have some glass glitter and some acrylic paint because I thought I think doing some gel printing on some of those would be really cool. And um, I also grabbed my big gel press because I figured I would just like make a design and keep layering up doing a layered print and then put all of the little pieces that I want to down and then I could really get a lot printed at once on the gel plate and that would decorate a lot in a little bit of time. And then I grabbed these stamps, and I don't really know, like, because then I was kind of excited. I'm like, ooh, I'm, I want to do some fun things. And I um, I was pulling these off my wall because I'm like, ooh, I love this vintage lady theme. Maybe I can do something with a vintage lady theme in the chipboard. But I think that might be a bit much to try to tie together. But they're here. They're, they're here, and they're on my table, ready to be grabbed if, um, if need be. Now, one of the other things I'm hoping to accomplish with this project is I want to use up some of these backgrounds that I made at the beginning of the pandemic. Do you remember when I was, um, and I've got other backgrounds in here I've made since then, um, too, with like brush -o and things like that. So this is my kind of like mixed media, interesting background bin. Um, they're all cut to like A2 card size bases. And I'm thinking if I get a really fantastic piece of chipboard, all I gotta do is stick it on one of these backgrounds that are kind of fun. And I got a card and it will be cute. So um, I have used up, I did have about two of these bins full of these backgrounds and I have used up one over the past year, over the pandemic, which I'm pretty happy with, but I still have a bunch more and I kind of forget about them. So I, I'm hoping to use up some of those and make a bunch of cards. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the cards. Maybe I'll donate them. Maybe I'll put them in the shop. I don't know. Um, 
I love to see. I, I don't know if it'll be posh enough. There's a shop that I sell at called Accents, and it is kind of fancy. Um, so I don't think a lot of my cards qualify for their fanciness, but maybe they'll come out and they'll be really posh and, uh, <laughs> and they'll want to use them in their store. I don't know. Oh, by the way, I want to uh, just uh, make note of the fact that this is Sunday, and I'm just kind of... I, I figured this way I can kind of play and and um, experiment and not worry about like wasting productive workday time. And also, it's a little noisy around here, so just kind of keep that in mind. I'm going to work right on my mat. I don't see any reason not to. And we are going to have some fun here. So one thing I love to do with my gel press is to do layered prints. And I really love to use my pan pastels for this. And I actually kept my pan pastels here in my office. And I'm going to go grab, I'm just going to grab one little tray of them. And I'm going to grab some sponges. So this is actually my overflow tray. I just, I'm running, I'm already running out of space on the table because of the, uh, because of the amount of different things I grabbed. And I was overwhelmed. And I was mentioning that in sat chat. Just like, guys, I'm so overwhelmed because I pulled out all these projects and I don't know what I want to do with them. So I'm just going to go with like a, a fuchsia, a lime, a turquoise. Oh, maybe I'll grab the, um, the metallics would be good too. You could also use mica powder or eyeshadow for this. Uh, here we go. I should probably have Jason edit this out, but we're all friends, right? Pretend it's a live stream. I'll probably premiere this actually. So I'll probably be like, when this goes live, I'll probably be like in the chat chatting with you guys. I like to know, so this technique here, we are doing a layered gel print. So instead of like printing and printing and printing, we actually build up our layers on our plate and then we let it dry. And actually, you know what? I want this grungy side up because, um, and I don't keep the bottom layer on it. Like there's a, the protection, the, um, the, plastic protecting film. I don't leave that on there because it will slide around. This will just cling to my mat. This is kind of the dirty side of the mat, the side that I, you know, I usually work on, but then if I'm going to do colored pencil or something where I need a smooth surface, I flip this mat over and work on the back side. Uh, that just occurred to me. Seriously, I've had this mat for like a year. It just occurred to me to do that because I was like color, doing colored pencils. I'm like, oh, all these scratches from where I cut things with my exact knife keep showing up. Oh, man. And then I'm like, Lindsay, flip the darn thing over. It's smooth on the other side, you crazy person. <laughs> do, do you guys do that? Does it take you a while sometimes? <laughs> to figure stuff out like that, stuff that should be so obvious. Now, I have some stencils. You remember that set of stencils that I told you guys about on Amazon and they were like 36 by six stencils for like $13? They're fantastic, we're gonna use those. I was gonna keep them just for like, um, for like uh, clean, <laughs> for clean card making. But I'm like, they're right here. I'm just going to use them. They'll wash, or I won't wash them. And they'll just add a little bit of flair to my next project. <laughs> we'll go in with these pretty pearlescent colors. These sponges are the soft tools from Pan Pastel. They're firmer than a makeup wedge, but you could totally use a makeup wedge for that if you want to. Um, the thing that I really like about that is the these wipe really clean easily, so uh, you don't have to wash them, and you do get most of the material off of it and onto your project, which I think is really um, is really nice because then you're not like wasting, you're not it's not soaking up a bunch of the material and wasting. It. So by the, I'm just like lifting like that and just bringing it over here. Nothing fancy at all. I think I'm gonna leave that stencil just sitting there though as I add some other elements. Let's do these fish scales here. Those will be really nice in some pearlescent colors. So let's do some, some blue and we can do some purple. So this layer that we're doing first, so you have to kind of think backwards. So if you're putting this in now, this is what's gonna be on the front. And I like to start off with pastel because it clings really well to your um, your gel plate. It's because it's kind of almost got a little bit of a static electricity quality. So it'll, it'll, look, it'll work really nice. Now I don't go right up to the edge when it's a pattern like this because I don't want to have a weird, awkward, like stop to the pattern, so I just kind of, well I did there, but I just try to make it a little bit more organic looking there around the edge. 
Maybe I'll add a little bit of just like a brighter turquoise in there too. But I like to have my metallics as a first layer because I know they're going to catch the light. If you bury your metallics, they don't really, uh, they don't look as nice. Oh, this is a good one. That one's pretty. Look at that. Isn't that fun? I was just so thrilled when I saw that, when I saw that set because pat uh, stencils are so expensive. And I do have good collection of stencils, but the ones in the set were actually quite different from what I have in pattern and scale. Now I have other fish scales, but this had a thicker border, so I thought, well, that's kind of fun. That's kind of different. Um... I'm always on my, I always keep my eyes open, especially like in the clearance bins and like dollar stores and salvage places, things like that, to, to find unique stencils that I don't already have. Don't buy something you already have because then you're, you know, that's not a bargain, unless it's much better than what you already have and you know you're going to use it more. But for the most part, if you buy things that, um, that are the same as what you already have, one thing is not going to get used. You know, you may, something's just going to sit on your shelf and never get used if you do that. I hope that makes sense. This is an interesting pattern. I thought these were all pretty cool looking. I'm going to grab a little bit of green too. A little bit of a uh, lime and kind of sap green from the other pan pastels. Also, I highly recommend limiting your your palette because you can get really overwhelmed. It's kind of like, I don't know if you ever went scrapbooking back in the day and you go to like a... Um, you go to a crop at like a scrapbook store and, oh, there's another shade of green I have. Oh, this is nice. Let's use that. Um, and you'd go to like a crop at a scrapbook store and you'd get so much done because you didn't have every single thing you've ever owned for crafting with you. You'd have just what you brought or maybe you were new so you didn't have so many supplies and you could just get so much more done because you were, your supplies were limited. And um, I think that's a really smart way to go about crafting is just to kind of self-limit your supplies so that you don't get overwhelmed. What do we want to do there? Oh, I think I want some nice bright orange and fuchsia there. Let's do some there. Let's do some fuchsia. Get a little bit of red metallic. Oh, I like that. Now we got one little space there. What do we want to put there? Let's, oh, let's do this one. I love this collection of stencils. There were just so many interesting, um, interesting little patterns there. So, and you you rarely ever find something like that that's cheap that actually has unique stuff. It's usually kind of same old, same old stuff you already have, so it's not really a deal. But it's nice when you can find something that is really unique. So now we're gonna lift these up. Oh, that looks so cool. So my stencils. If you want, you can just spray these with water and wipe them with a towel. Oh, that looks really cool so far. We've got layer one of our interesting stuff happening. So this is already dry. We don't have to wait any for anything here. Now I'm going to look more into my stencils, and I'm going to start doing some layers of... Um, I could do some more pan pastel layers if I want to. Let's say I want to like fill in some of the gaps, or I could go right in with... Um, I could go right in with acrylic, one or the other. I think I want to maybe get in the center, find like something with a really small print on it. And that's not really small, but it's really groovy. So I'm going to use that. Um, I'm going to go and kind of bridge some of the gaps. I think I'll double load this sponge, get some of that in there. Just to kind of... Um, just to kind of fill in so I don't have any uninteresting spots. I want to make sure no matter where I'm putting the um, the chipboard pieces down, because I'll be able to fit so many on here, I want to make sure I'm going to be getting an interesting picture. Ooh, actually this one will be really nice too. Let's do this one this way and let's do some, let's do half fuchsia. Let's do half purple. That's cool. And just kind of get it in there. And we'll do one more. The reason I have some duplicate pan pastel colors is because I bought a few. I bought a mixed media kit, which was just like, I think it was like nine colors. And then I got, um, 
well, no, actually, first I bought three colors. I bought magenta, like a lime green and cyan or something, or or a yellow. And so I bought the three primaries so I could mix. And then I um, and then I like that, so I bought a small mixed media kit. And then I ended up going ahead and getting the um, getting each of the twenty sets you can get without duplicates. So I have duplications from the first things that I bought in Pan Pastel. I'm gonna set these someplace safe so I don't step on them. That would be heartbreaking. And now we're gonna do a little bit of acrylics. And I'm just gonna set all these Pan Pastels stuff down. Oftentimes I will get another gel plate to do my, um, to use as my palette. And I think I'm gonna do that because that just makes a lot more sense and I know I'm not going to, um, and I can use that extra plate. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna to go to the storage area and grab another gel plate. I'm gonna start with some more bold colors and sponge them on. And I've just got some little makeup wedges. You can wash these, or if you pounce from the bottom, you can let them dry and snip off the bottom and you can keep working with your pat with your uh, sponge until it, you know, until it gets short. You can see that's kind of what I've done there. Um, that way you can get a lot of use out of these and they don't just become like disposable. Uh, I'm gonna start off with my reds. I like to work the darker, I like to do my pearlescence first. And then I like to do, um, I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow. Um, my pearlescence first because that's their metallics only show really if they're the top layer. And then I like to do kind of more bold acrylic stenciling. And then um, I don't know if I if I feel like I can add more, then I will like maybe add some blacks or something. But then. Um, I go ahead and I just brayer a really pale color over it and that's going to be like the adhesive that pulls that print up. So uh, that's kind of the the method to my madness, if you want to call it madness. And the paints I'm using are just acrylic paints. These are the paper uh, fresco finish from Paper Artsy. They work really well on gel prints because they give you a matte finish that you could actually stamp over if you wanted to. They're almost like a... They feel like a chalk paint. You could you totally use chalk paint too. It's not gonna hurt your uh, homemade chalk paint. I don't know if you're gonna use like plaster Paris to make your own chalk paint. That might be difficult, but if you're using like a commercially made matte um, chalk paint, it should be fine because it's just a matte acrylic. I want the red first, and I'm and I'm using um, these are my five by five and five by seven gel plates. I keep them on a piece of plexiglass with their protective plastics on them. I'm um, using that. Uh, sorry for any glare. I actually have my overhead lights and my studio lights on at the same time. I forgot to shut the overheads off. Honestly, oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm speaking so fast. Um, honestly, I typically will use all the lights if I'm not filming because I like to have things nice and bright. Get into that age where the old peepers don't like to focus too quick unless you got all the lights on. All right, now let's see. What else do we want to put in there? Let's, um, do we want any more red or are we good with the red? Um, I think we're good with the red for now. I'm just going to set this. I'll set that right there. And then maybe do some of this Aztec pattern with some blues and greens. You can wash these sponges. Did I mention that? I mentioned you could clip off the the excess if you want to. Um, but you can wash these sponges just with like dish soap and water. Rinse, actually, probably just rinsing them out for the most part will remove most of the acrylic paint. But I know a lot of people don't want to like, um, you know, re-rinse it. Well, it's the same thing as washing a brush, honestly. Uh, it might hold a little bit more than brush bristles, but um, you know, if you don't want to bother or you don't want that going down your, your drain, you know, just snip off that little bit that, that you've used after it dries and then you have fresh sponge underneath. And I get these right at the Dollar Tree. They're just, um, they're just cosmetic wedges and I think you get like a, a pretty big pack. I don't know if it's 20 or 50 or what in there, but it's quite a bit. And these are all cool colors, so I'm just using the same sponge. That's less to clean, or if you're going to dispose of it, it's less to, to dispose of. And again, I'm trying to keep the edges organic so I don't have, um, oh, I'm just loving this. Uh, so I don't have too much, like, I don't want to have a weird, awkward edge. I want every smidgen of this to be beautiful. I want, no matter where I stick that chipboard piece down to print, it's going to be gorgeous. 
and everything you've already put we're working front to back so you don't have to worry about protecting something you've already printed because it's there you want to do your favorite to your least favorite so if you have the stencils you really love those should be your first ones that you do because they're going to show and i just love scrumptious patterns like this oh let's see do we want to do maybe uh, maybe we'll go to something else because Oh, this is interesting. Oh, there's so many pretty stencils in here. I can't believe the price on those. Let's do... I think I want to go back to red now. I like these little spirals. They were just such a steal. There's so many fun things you can use on the jelly plate. Uh, I was using pouring paints on them to do like my... I don't know if you guys saw the video of my planner that I did, uh, I don't know, it was December or January, but I redid my, it was after Christmas, that's right, because every Christmas I always, like, complain to myself that why is my planner such a mess, or not my planner, oh, what am I, what am I saying, my thing that I keep my addresses in my address book, so I'm always like, ah, it's such a mess, I'm the only one that can address the cards because I'm the only one that can understand this mess <laughs> I'm having my planner. My, not my planner, my address book, so, um, so I decorated it, made it all beautiful, have I put the addresses in it yet? I have not, friends. <laughs> I'd love to say that I had, but that would be a lie. <laughs> I have not, guys. <laughs> oh, well. My goal is before next Christmas, before I actually need to send out a bunch of cards, I will have that done. Okay. Ooh, I'm just... Mm, so pretty. Love it. Okay, what else do we want to add? Do we need to add anything else? I don't know. It's looking pretty snazzy. This is kind of fun. Uh, maybe just some navy blue of this one. I just really like the patterns here. Some of that other. Oh, crapola. Uh, maybe I'll just... I'll just do that right there. <laughs> Man. You, it... Your gel plate is actually kind of clingy until it gets really covered with stuff and then like things want to move so just be aware but honestly this is like layers in back it's not like it's going to be like oh i see that mistake then you're going to notice it so don't worry about it and these dry really fast because we're just doing really little layers so it's uh it may seem like it's kind of time consuming but it's really not we're going to get a lot of goodness from all this effort we're putting in at the at the beginning here it's gonna be really good I have a feeling and I really like the big gel plates for this I picked this up at the stamp show I think it was um, in the Marco's paper booth this is the gel press bl brand but I find the gel press bland bland brand and jelly arts to be very similar if not the exact same thing I've heard the gel press actually used to make the jelly arts plates but stopped a few years ago and but then again all my gel press plates are older uh, all my new ones are no gosh all my jelly arts ones are older my new ones are all the gel gel press ones uh, not that I'm like I was certainly not boycotting though I just that's what I see you know at the stamp show I usually if there's a new size or something I like to grab it I like them both equally I haven't tried all the other brands I haven't tried the speedball I've heard the speedball is not as good for these techniques but I haven't used it so I can't say like firsthand experience all right I'm pretty happy with this um, I'm just gonna take a quick peek through my things I don't know if I want to do black anywhere a lot of times I reserve my black for like stamping over the top so I have that extra layer of value that will stand out so I have that kind of like isn't that a cool stencil um that's like a spiral can you see that isn't that pretty I'm gonna have to link this down below they did restock it so you can find it I think I'm gonna leave that now that needs to dry so while that's drying know what you want to do you want to if you have a bunch of chipboard shapes you need to punch out go ahead and punch those out so like you know get them ready the ones you want to use and um, kind of put them in a pile get them ready because you're gonna have to work fast once we do our next thing so um, I'm just gonna go I'm gonna pause the camera while I do that where I punch out my shapes you do the same and then we'll meet back here when it's time to put our adhesive layer down all right now we need to put down a layer of paint to be basically the glue that's gonna stick this pattern onto our chipboard and I'm just gonna use some white and I'm using um, just a titanium white from Arteza and I'm going to use my brayer and I'm, what I'm going to do is actually pick up the color 
from the um, leftover color kind of from my little uh, jelly plate palettes here because I know it'll match if I do that. So I'm just kind of working it in here. This is a pretty heavy body paint, doesn't need to be. But um, I did want something that was nice and opaque so it would cover up the um, the chipboard, right? Because the chipboard has that brown color to it, that gray color. So we want to make sure that it's going to um, that it's going to stick everything down. Now let's say you're like, oh, I don't want to waste the uh, the color that's on there, or you really like that color. You can take some of your pieces of chipboard, you can press it right onto the palette one. You can get yourself some coloring done there if you want to as well. So I think it's just kind of a nice uh, versatile, versatile, versatile thing you can do. I don't need to cap that up. Might as well just keep on using that. Get kind of like a bluish color here. I do want it a little on the light side, just so that um, all the other colors will show up. And I just want to make sure that I don't just go back and forth over an area. The goal is to lay a nice coating down on everything. That's pretty though, isn't it? And I wonder if I have a really, no, I don't think I do. Let's do a little bit. I just, I'm afraid, I'm gonna put a little bit of water. I'm just gonna spray a little bit on my palette there because this paint is so thick, I just am afraid it's gonna dry a little too quickly. Oh, I got a big glob of it on there. Let's work it out over there. Maybe I should've used my pouring paint. I just wanna make sure I have enough um, enough wet paint on the surface that it's going to stick my chipboard to it because we're going to put our chipboard on then we're going to let it dry on the we're going to let it dry right on the plate wish me luck <laughs> it's going to work fast so okay I feel like I've got a pretty good coating on there so what we're going to do is we are going to press our chipboard down. Now when you're doing that you'll notice if it's a, like a punch out like this you'll have a finished side and a raw side. The finished side is going to have like a little like kind of overturned area. Let's see if that will show. See it's kind of overturned and if I flip it over it's kind of sharp and raw. So you want to make sure that you get that um, overturned area. And I'm just going to try to squeeze in as much as I can. I'm going to go with my bigger shapes first because um, I have a bunch of little shapes that I can work around. Now something I was noticing, and that's why we shouldn't hoard our supplies, I was noticing that a lot of my stuff looked kind of dated, like that even looks kind of dated to me. Um, not that I don't, I, I don't, really don't think somebody's gonna be like getting a card and being like ungrateful, being like, oh, that looks so out of style. But you know, you might be sick of that style because you've used it so much and um, that's what happens when we go and we finally have time to use those supplies we hoarded. We realize, oh, they're not, they're not that trendy anymore. They kind of look dated and out of style. So you know, buy stuff and use it. Don't hang on to it forever because you know you might not like it. Like some of these flowers, I just loved them when I first got them. Now to me, they look just very kind of uh, late '90s, early two. Well, been early 2000s, I guess. Maybe late '90s, but they just look like this. This looks very dated to me. So I probably won't use that. I'll probably donate that. Um, even these leaves, they look very um, kind of cutesy and not like the style I currently like. So just a word to the wise. And as I was looking through this stuff, I was like, you know, I think that I'm going to use what I want from this from this uh, from this box, and then I am going to donate the rest because. I could totally see my friend Diane's preschool kids having a ball using this and you know they they would have a ball and you know the kids still aren't in school full time here they're still at their daycares at least three days out of the week even if they are um, back to school some of the time in this town anyway 
So it'll be nice for something for them to do as well. So I'm glad that I have that resource. I'm glad there's somebody that can use the stuff that I overbought back in the day. And it's, you know, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a lesson to buy a little bit more intentionally in the future. Just because you bought something and you regret it or it turns out you never used it, you don't have to keep paying for that mistake. My sister said that to me once. Uh, she goes, she goes, I made a mistake. I made the mistake once buying it. I'm not going to keep paying for that mistake. And because um, we were talking about, uh, she did the KonMari stuff before I did. And we were talking about that. And I was like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Circles are great. Circles are like, I can probably could make, could I, I wonder. Can I make contact? We're going to see if that works. I don't know if it will. These two pieces are still together, but I think that looks kind of dated, so I don't know. I don't, and I, you know, if you like it, use it. Please don't. I'm not like, um, I'm not saying that don't use it because it's dated. Absolutely not. If you like it, use it. I'm just not like, I didn't like that shape. I didn't like that curviness. You know, sometimes cars, you see a car like from like 15 years ago and there, and there's something about it that makes it look 15 years old and you're not sure what it is exactly but it's just something like the curviness of it or you know it just makes it look like it's from a certain era like that's cute that i think that looks dated but i also like it i also think it's kind of cute so i'm going to use at least at least one of them i like circles so i'll put some circles in there my phone will make weird noises because it's a new phone and i haven't like I haven't managed to shut all the notifications off that I don't want, and that's probably like them telling me that there's some Pinterest boards I should look at. It's like, look, if I'm not on Pinterest, then I'm doing something important. I only go on Pinterest when I've got some time to waste, or I just feel like, you know, being a lazy bum. So I do not need encouragement to be a lazy bum. <laughs> Thanks, phone. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I don't think I really like those tags that much. Because I, like if it didn't have that shape on there, yeah, I'm not crazy about that. Maybe I won't use that. Maybe I'll do something else. I do like these little leaves, though. I think those are cute. Uh, I don't want to waste space. Uh, that's I like those primitive stars. Primitive is one of those things. Like I have dyes that are like primitive stars and primitive hearts, and I they'll still think those are because they're not like such a huge. They were never such a humongous trend. I feel like stuff like that. It never really goes out of style because it was never like all over the place to begin with. You know. Oh, I've got a lot of tabs. Maybe I should find something else. Mm, I'm not crazy about those flowers. Boy, I'm awful picky. I'm awful picky, but you know what? I'm knowing what I don't use can be used by someone else. So it's like, there's no point for me to just try to use everything because, you know, I'm never going to make that many cards. So might as well just use what I feel like using and donate the rest. Or if I felt like, well, it's not good enough to donate, then I can just part with it and let it go. Oh, that's not going to fit there. I hope these are still... Oh, it's still tacky. That's good. This is one time when you want it to be tacky. Let's do some more circles. Little circles are really cute embellishments on cards, so... I turned my space heater off. I was getting too warm in here. I had a radiator, and I really liked it, but I'd had it for... It finally crapped the bed a uh, week before last, and so I've been using a different space heater in here. I have a wall heater, but it's not, it keeps turning on and off and on and off, and I'd rather just turn it on, warm the place up, and then turn it off. It's not quite cold enough here now, because we're kind of getting into spring, that it won't stay on. So, it just turns on and off and on and off, and it's, you know, it's. I think it's better to just have something on constantly, or, or you know, or nothing because having that on and off is just kind of kind of annoying. Yeah, I can definitely see. I think I'm gonna have a good time with this project, but then I think I'm definitely going to let let things go. Do we need more little circles? Hmm. right here. I'll just use these up. Maybe a couple of photo corners. I like photo corners too. They're a nice little framing element. If I have room for them anywhere. It's 
kind of like playing Tetris. <laughs> You're trying to squish all these things in. It's a good, you know, I think most of us that <laughs> that kind of hoard stuff, we're good at this. We can fit so much stuff in so such a little a little space. It's like our superpower. Oh, that's probably enough. I think it's pretty good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is push these in really well by rolling my brayer over them. Hopefully that's what will happen. And we're going to hope for the best. We're going to let these dry on here and then hopefully when we pull them up they're going to be beautiful. Now we do have um, we do have our palette over here, so we can go ahead and see if we can pull some prints on some other chipboards while we're at it. So we get some, we get something on them. Sometimes just having a basic layer is just really all you need. You just want something down there so that you can, you have a starting point. The artist Moreau used to, when his wife would get back, uh, from grocery shopping, he would take the the paper that the meat was wrapped in, and he would um, rub his canvas with it because he didn't want to start off. He needed to break that that blank canvas. He needed to have something to make it not so pristine. I think I want to get a little bit more on that one. I just thought that was really interesting, but it's kind of true. You know, it's like when something's pristine and perfect, it can be very difficult to use it. Now those are too dry. Oh, that's an interesting, that's an interesting thing. Let's get some, oh, let's do some of these. I'm just going to play until I use up this stuff over here. Actually, oh shoot, I can't move that because it's right on my table. Well, direct your, your gaze over to this area. Or fast forward, I mean, you do you, right? <laughs> I've got these uh, fluid paints, and I never really used them that much they were they were a gift and I thought well I'm gonna use those on my jelly plate and now I am <laughs> and I've had them for like a couple of years <laughs> better late than never sometimes things get precious right and then you forget that you wanted to use them now this I'm afraid is going might end up being kind of too bold I don't know we'll see Alright, let's stick that down there. Or I might just use that. Maybe I will need to let those dry as well. Oh, that's a cool shape. I missed that one somehow. Um, just kind of experimenting too, so I'll use ones that aren't necessarily my favorites. Just to see how they do. Whoops. That's kind of a neat little design. I bet that would be cute on something. Now the funny thing is though, I'll look at an old scrapbook page and it's not like I'm seeing those older products and being like, oh that's so dated. I still like looking at them, in fact I think that's kind of charming because it reminds me of like, the it reminds me even more of what was popular, you know, the time the photos took place and I, and I scrapbooked the pages since I've always scrapbooked, um, uh, like, uh, what do you call it, like in real time or I scrapbooked as things happened. So. I didn't have much interest going back in time and scrapbooking old photos. I don't really have any. I don't really have any old photos of myself. So um, I, I started scrapbooking when my kids were born. So it um, it was always like current scrapbooking. So it, I think it's kind of cool to see those. Um, I put that. Oh, that's right side up. Okay. I think it's kind of cool to see those like that. All right. Let's. Ooh, I kind of like this side though with a grungy brayering. That's kind of cool. Alright, let's, should I let it dry? I don't know. Ooh, that feels dry. I wonder if I can pull these up yet. I want to pull one up. Oh, I shouldn't. I should be patient. Maybe I'll pull one of these up and see what's what's going on. Oh, not much is going on. Nothing's going on over there. We're going to let those dry. Alright, we're going to let all this dry, and then we're going to come back and we're going to pull these up. Okay, let's have a look and see what things are looking at at this stage. Hopefully, this is going to pull up all of the product. Oh, I think it's going to. You want to let this dry so it can, oh, look at that. Oops, I just dropped it. Isn't that cool? Oh, I really like that. Now, so for something like that, I think that could be a finished embellishment, and then you could put maybe like a word strip over it or something. 
Um, I need to have a little tray to keep my finished things in. I'm just going to use the top of this Pan Pastel palette for right now. And you got to be kind of careful. Oh, I just love it. They're all just going to be a little bit different. Maybe we'll do all the hearts for, maybe those are the only hearts I had. I was thinking I'd keep my shapes together. Oh, it really clings on good. I didn't, that metallic is just so pretty because it will catch a little bit of the light. Now, if it doesn't pull everything up, that's fine because I'm, we're going to do a technique next to use up what's left. Ooh, that looks cool. It all looks kind of neat with that raw edge, but if you don't like the raw edge, you can hit it with a little pan pastel and the sponge, or you could just swipe it with paint, or I'm going to show you some other techniques that we can... Oh, it doesn't show up unless I put my hands behind it. Um, I'll be showing you some other techniques that we're going to do to, you know, gussy up our chipboard as well. So that way, if you don't have a gel plate... Oh, I like that one. Um, then you can also do these techniques. Now, if you get some, like, paint like that, how it's kind of sticking out, just kind of press it with your finger and, and roll it over the edge so you get a nice finished edge because you will get little bits of raw paint. I just think that looks... That, how cute would that be on a birthday card for like a 13 year old or something? Alright, I'm gonna be a little quicker now, just kinda... You gotta be careful with some of those longer ones that you don't bend. You don't crease them or anything. They'll bend a little bit, but... Oh, so cute. And the nice thing about this, look how many of these we got done in, you know, relatively a small amount of time. Look at that! That's so pretty. I turned off the overhead light because it was starting to look kind of yellow, and then I'm like, oh, let's do that so we can... I'll have to remember to tell Jason the first couple clips are going to need to be white balanced and the other ones won't. <laughs> Keep him on his toes, right? Ah, uh, I really like that pattern there that's got those little uh, ovals, or I don't know what you call them. Whatever that shape is. Very fun. Oh, that was cool. That would also be really cool with that other star on, like, a birthday card. We're going to have some fun. I think we're going to have... We're going to make all kinds of... This video is going to be, like, four and a half hours long. <laughs> I know I want to show you how all these come off because it's, it's kind of like you kind of forget what you had. Oh, that had some of the um, the uh, arrows, and that was one stencil I really didn't like out of that kit, but I think it works really well for this technique. Oh, look at this frame. It's so distressed and grungy. That would be cute in a scrapbook page, like a teen scrapbook page. Oh, that's really pretty. Um, your chipboard also, because it's been like picking up wet product, might be a little soft and flimsy feeling. So you you know you might just make sure it's flat when you set it down, or just kind of bend it back into shape if it bends a little bit when you peel it up. And don't forget to push over those edges. Do a bunch of little ones. That's cool. I love little tabs and little photo corners. Oh no, these didn't stick quite as well. So those will probably need something else. I'm going to put those in the seconds pile. Those are not first quality. No siree. Come to expect a little bit more from a card from Lindsay Wyrick, don't you? Expect a little, you expect a classier card than that, half painted. That looks cool. Maybe the circles, seems like the circles did not take very well. I wonder why that would be. Uh, you know what, I bet it is because we put them on last. Um, you know, because we did our big pieces first to kind of help fill up. It was like putting, you know, pebbles in a jar. If you have a jar and you got to fill it with a bunch of pebbles and sand and rocks, you put the biggest rocks in first, then you put the pebbles, then you put the sand, then you put the water, you know, because if you do it the other way around, you won't be able to fit everything in. That's the same thing as what we're doing here. We do our bigger shapes first, but as our things dry, as we're trying to get everything stuck down, some of those tinier pieces didn't get enough wet paint on them. Oh, I just love it. That's so cute. These are going to be fun to create with. I don't know how much more I'm going to have to do these, but I think like maybe like a little bit of gold paint or golden like some metallic embossing powder. I bet some metallic embossing powder here and there where you know it didn't have really good coverage or maybe it had an ugly part. I like those. You we could stamp a, a sentiment on these little tabs. How cute would that be? Like if we had a really pretty stamped image and we didn't want to really do too much to the card, we put this up on the edge of the stamped image and we stamp Happy Birthday or 
something. This was that one that I tried to do two at once. Let's see if that worked. Uh, ooh, hey, not too bad. I really like the circle center. I'm surprised we put that part down first. I'm surprised this one pulled better. And let's see, we got a photo corner that is unimpressive. Oh, that one's cool though. I like that. That's really funky. Oh my. Oh, those look really cool. I like those a lot. Those might even go on a scrapbook page. Um, and then these guys over here. Hey, these actually pulled up. I wasn't so sure how these were going to behave. This one didn't pull very good, but I like the, I still like the, um, I could do my letter stamping there with the, the hammer. That would look cool there. Who knows how many of these ideas I'm actually going to accomplish. I'm just giving you some ideas, so, you know, even if I don't actually, ooh, oh, that looks like a mar like marble kind of. Even if I don't end up doing them myself, at least you'll have some ideas. Who knows how this journey is going to end up. Actually, set this right up here so you can see it better. I've got that one. Oh, we still got some wet paint there, too. Oh, that one's pretty, I think. A little, not a floor to leave, it is some sort of little flourish. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh my, this one's stuck. Good. The, the, the better, the more stuck they feel, the better they're going to pull the print up. So, it's a good thing. And this is our last one right here. Ooh, I like that. That's pretty with the yellow underneath. Okay, so now what I want to do is try printing some full sheet pieces. So I don't know how this is gonna how this is gonna go, but we're gonna give it a try. And I have a couple large sheets, but I'm gonna try my um, my thing here isn't quite big enough to. Um, it isn't quite big enough for me to get two sheets on, on the, my big gel press, so I'm going to just try to make a little bit of a, like push them together and get myself a little bit of a larger printing area. And I've got a couple sheets, I've got this sheet with like um, numbers and like symbols, and I've got this sheet that's an alphabet. And just make sure you're printing on the right side. I am going to try printing on top of this. So I'm going to put some different colors down. I'm going to do some red. I'm going to do some yellow. Some yellow over there too. Maybe some of this light blue. This should be interesting. I have no idea how this is going to come out. And then finally some white. And hopefully we'll get something interesting. And hopefully it'll clean up clean up our uh, plate while we're at it. Look at all of our beautiful things there. Isn't that inspiring? I don't know. Maybe it just looks like a hot mess. <laughs> so I'm just going to there's really not a lot of rhyme or reason. I'm just trying to get a nice coating on everything so I can have the adhesion. And I know it looks like I put a lot of color down. I really don't think it was that much, to be honest. I think I put that much down. Um, it does look like a lot, though, doesn't it? I know. I want to bring some of that blue over here, too. So it's... Oh, I did put a little bit of blue over here. I just don't want any big gobs. I kind of like this though. This is kind of interesting. It's not going to look like this though because we have all the shapes that we pulled from the front that will be showing on this and while we have our dirty brayer we can... Well you know what? Let's first get... Let's first get our shapes. I want to get that white blob spread out a little bit. Okay. So I want to... This one's the most important one. I love this font so Hopefully I will get a good thing here. This has been a tough drawer to tackle because it, everything fits in there so perfectly. It's just a little drawer. It's not hurting anybody. It's not really taking any space. I don't need the space for something else. So it's very... I'm finding that a lot since I kind of 
KonMari that if it's like not in the way, not hurting anybody, it's no, you know, I don't need this space or something else, I'll just let it go, I'll just leave it, right? But, um, I don't think it's good for me to keep these extra things that I'm not using, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, sure, I might someday, but boy, I, you know, interests change, and the things you want to use change, so... So I don't know. So I'm going to take some of these pieces that I weren't that thrilled with and I'm going to throw them on my the back of that. Actually, yeah. And then I'm just going to brayer over some leftover ink on them. Because, I mean, I'm not going for a specific... I just kind of want texture and color. And I'm going to see what, you know, I just want to see what happens. I want to have something kind of, ooh, I like that, kind of interesting and interesting and fun. Now let's see, what else? I like the hearts, I like the primitive hearts, so I think it's good to have, to kind of do something to these ones that I think I'm going to use. And then I'm going to let go of the rest, and I'm going to be fine with that. Gonna let it go, as Elsa would say. Oh, that's cute! Fold over that dry paint, I like that. I like to do, like, imagery that has been seen as, like, feminine, but do it in, like, colors that are seen as masculine. You know, doing something that you would expect to see in, in pink or orange in a warm color way, do it in a cool color way. I think it's neat. Oh, I like the birds. Let's do the birds too. I could just actually, I could fit that one right on there. Press it down good. And we do that over here. Okay, now we gotta let these dry. So, second verse, same as the first, guys. I'm gonna let these dry and come back. Ah. And come back later. All right. We'll see you in a bit. All right, I took a break. I actually went upstairs and got my dinner started. I'm making a vegan casserole. So these are the ones that we just kind of brayered on because they were kind of lackluster, or maybe they were just plain. I don't remember. We uh, They needed something, and we did something. So yay us. Move that stuff out of the way. See what our little birds look like over here. Oh, they are. Yep. They are stuck good. Birds are always good motifs. I feel like this is, oh, I like that one. I feel like this. these are nice. These are nice bird shape. I like that. Okay, so I wonder what's going to happen when we pull this up. If, um, I wonder if the letters will pop out. <laughs> oh, they kind of want to, I think. Oh, let's see. This is so exciting, isn't it? And we're peeling back the print. Um, you know what? I think I should flip this over and peel the, the plate off of it. Oh my, because I'm just... The, oh no. Oh no, the... Um, some of it is not adhering. Let's see. Overall, it's pretty cool. So, all oh, the area, you know what? It's not completely dry. Shoot. The area where I had that thick white paint, I, you remember I said I was going to barrier that out more? Oh, shoot. That's, that's, it wasn't dry. And so, it actually, it actually damaged the chipboard. Well, I'm just crying over spilt milk. Let's see how this one's going. I am going to flip that. I do like overall. I like the design overall. I can use the letters. Um, hopefully I won't need a J or a K. <laughs> Actually, I probably could salvage the J. Hopefully I won't need a K in my project. So, that won't be a project for my son Jackson. <laughs> He'll probably be totally fine with that too. Let's, let's flip it. Ooh, I like that when you flip it because then you can see what the back looks like. Let me pull off my plexiglass there. And we will lift that back. Yeah, I don't know if this is the best technique for the... Well, you know what? The sheet's doing all right. I guess the, the moral of the story is make sure your paint's not too thick and make sure you let it dry. I do like um, 
yeah, I do like this. I really like this side of the print a lot more than the other side, but these were kind of like, I didn't even know if I was going to use those, so, um, so yeah, that's cool. All right, I think I'm done with the jelly print portion of my project, so I'm going to clean up, and um, then we'll get started on something else. So real quick tip before we clean up, uh, I put one of the plastic sheets on the back side so I can move this, but see how there's all this really interesting, I'm just going to set a piece, piece of paper underneath, see how there's that cool alphabet like ghosting on there and that really just interesting pattern and, and uh, kind of flavors happening. I want to, um, I don't want to waste that, so I've got a piece of cheap drawing paper here and I grabbed one of my sheer pouring paints, these are the Arteza pouring colors, and now I don't like paint pouring, and um, I had these uh, these paints, the company sent them to me to try out, but I'm just not a paint pouring person. However, I really like these in lieu of fluid acrylics. Now, you'll have to look and see if they're an affordable option because the prices change a lot with Arteza products, but um, you can find affordable pouring sets all over the internet. Um, I've only used this set, you could also use like pouring medium or even glue, white glue and thin down what you have. Um, but to have a nice sheer product like this is nice because the your paper, the, the tone of your paper will show through. It's not going to overpower what you have here for the, you know, crusty bits that you want to save. And um, I just think it's really, uh, it's really neat. I want to make sure I get those edges really well so that it will pull that off. So if you don't want pouring medium, you don't want pouring paint, just take some like a... Uh, white glue or some Mod Podge, thin it down if it's thick, and mix it with enough paint to be able to brayer over your plate. And that's going to give you a really fabulous, um, a really fabulous look. And I'm just going to press that down. Oops. Oh, shoot. Um, I want to make sure I cover it all. So you want a piece of paper that's a little bit bigger than what you have. This is a 12 by 14 uh, plate, and this paper I think is like just a hair over 12 by 18 and just press it really good. You don't need to like, you know, bear down on it hard, but you want contact so that when it dries and we peel the paper up, we'll have a really nice print. And then I've got these two guys here with a lot of paint left on them. They're not as interesting, but still, I think they would be really cute to do the same thing. So hopefully they're close enough together that this piece of cardstock will cover both. Yep. Yeah. And I'm just going to just pull a card stop print, and this will be a nice base for a card in the future, or a couple of cards, or something. And it's going to clean the plate up, which is what I really love, because I don't like to leave my plates like this. I know some a lot of artists do. They don't, they don't clean their plates. But um, I do clean my jelly plates because I want to have, um, I want to make sure I can get a clean print when I want a clean print. So I do clean them. And I try to only use one side of my plate, so I do have a kind of a pristine one if I'm doing something like with inks that I know I can wash off easily, but uh, but I do I do like to clean them because I don't want stuff sitting on the plates that are gonna like leave an impression or leave a scar on the plate and um, you know, make it so that I can never get a good, like, proper print again if I want to do some proper printmaking. Now, I think the homemade jelly plates, gelatin plates, are better as far as getting a good impression. Um, but these are so convenient and so durable that, you know, I've kind of switched over to using these. Plus, they're vegan. Um, so, you can use whatever you want. I feel like this feels, like, a little uneven. I wonder if I have... It's probably just the... Uh, I was wondering if I might have a piece of chipboard underneath there or something. It's probably just the um, the paint that's stuck on there, I bet. But I'll let this dry. We'll pull it up at the end of the video, and um, we probably won't use it today, but then we'll have that paper for uh, an upcoming project. So do that to clean off your plates and then get a bonus uh, interesting textured print while you're at it. Good morning. I just want to update you to what I was up to since the last time we spoke here. I let my papers dry on the plate, and then I was thinking, oh, what I could do with uh, some of these alphabets that I didn't gel print on is that I could do um, I could do some word cards. And I was like, oh, they're really long, though. I couldn't fit them on a regular card. But then I thought, oh, I could do slimline cards, and I could use the backgrounds that I had drying on the gel plate. So all I did was I took one of my leftover sponges that I forgot to clean, obviously, and I snipped off the and then I just stippled some black fluid paint and it absorbed really well and gave me a beautiful matte 
um, finish, so I just want to show you that so you know how to reuse those sponges if you accidentally forget to clean them. You don't need to throw them away, just snip off the hard part and uh, and then you can, you know, use what's, what's left. That way you don't have to waste it. Okay, so one thing that I have realized when I'm doing paper like this is that it's better to peel, if you can, peel the paper, peel the plate off of the, um, the paper. So I'm just going to get these plates off of my, um, off of my plexiglass there that I store them on. And the reason for this is that your paper is not going to bend and get all out of whack. Ooh, that's really cool looking. That would be a cool background for a 6x6 six six card. This is the 5x5 five five Jelly Arts student plate. I picked that up at AC Moore a few years ago. There is still some crud on the edges, but um, I can put some tape, like scotch tape down there and pick that up if I want to. And, uh, ooh, hey. This is a 5x7. I believe this is also Jelly Arts. This one came in a, there was like a kit you could get printmaking cards, like 75 printmaking cards and a jelly plate, and it was, I can't remember what it was, but um, uh, I don't know if it's still available. If it is, I'll try to remember to link it down below, but I thought that was kind of neat because it kind of gives you everything. Really pretty. I think this is going to be so great with just like, you know, some letters on top, because look how they pop, because, you know, we're using black on these and we haven't used black anywhere else. And then we've got our big one here, and we will pull it off this way so that we don't warp our paper. And this is a gel press. Yes, a gel press. I think the gel presses now are thicker. Um, the jelly arts used to be a little bit thicker. Seems like they've gotten thinner over the years, um, but the gel presses are still nice and thick. Not that it probably doesn't really matter, um, honestly, but... Look at that. I think that looks so cool. It did bend a little bit, but um, but that's all right. Now, I can still see some, like, pan pastel, and I've still got some crusty bits on the outside, so I can clean that up a little bit more. Um, or I could let it sit if I think I want those edges on the next project. You could do whatever. You should be able to come off. You can use hand sanitizer if you've got some really finicky bits. I think these are really pretty. So what I did yesterday after we spoke is I um, I was waiting for these to dry and I had painted the uh, the letters and then I thought, oh, why don't I cut down some bases? Because I got some heavyweight cardstock that I really didn't like from Joann's. It was the Park Lane heavyweight colored cardstock and I liked their, um, their cream and their craft. I thought their white was a little gray and the colored cardstock it's printed, it's not solid, and so I'll make, pick out a color that I think has problems. Um, you'll notice that, yeah, can you see that? There's like, um, it's not printed very evenly. So I want to use this up. I mean, it's fine, it's sturdy, and you cover most of a card base anyway, so it's not the end of the world, but um, actually the inside was cleaner. Well, I can still see a little bit of a line. Um, it was just very inconsistent, and I wasn't happy with the quality, but for the weight of it, I do like it, and you know, you're just going to see an edge, so that really isn't going to show up. Um, so I decided to cut down two sheets of uh, every color that I had, and what I did was I cut it to seven and a half by eight and a half, and then I scored it in half at three and three quarters, so it makes a three and three quarter by eight and a half inch slimline card. And then the leftovers I kept over here, and that way I can do, um, like I can use these for like matting layers, and I can mix and match them, and you know, have some really cute little cards, and I can trim them even more if I want to have a border all the way around, or I can leave them like that if I just want a little border on the top and the bottom. So that's what I did yesterday. It was a nice puttery little Sunday project, and uh, now I'm going to trim down this paper to fit these slimline cards so we can make some cards with our chipboard letters. Okay, I trimmed down my papers. Look how pretty they are with just like on a white card base. I mean, just so clean and beautiful. I just love it. You can't buy paper like that. Even if you bought a paper that had a print like that, it wouldn't have these yummy textures. Ah, oh, just love it. So I did cut a couple card bases of five. I cut a, a five and a half by five and a half card. So it was basically five and a half by 11, fold it in half, and then a five by seven. So, because I didn't have those pre-cut. And now I'm gonna take these, I trim down to my slimline card size, and I'm gonna make some cards. And these I just trim down for my regular A2 card sizes, and I'll put those in with my other backgrounds to use in a bit. So first thing we're going to do is look at our beautiful rainbow cards and make some selections in color. Oh, this is fun. Uh, I think this pretty teal would be nice. That would be really pretty. And I can double mat, so I can say, okay, I like coral. Maybe we'll do a coral matting layer there. Just got to find it here. I like that coral. I do like the colors. 
that are available. If I do, if I rebought rebought any of those, and I would just trim that down a little bit. I think that would be pretty. If I rebought any of these, I would rebuy the um, probably just the pastels. Uh, that's pretty bold, so maybe just like a white matting layer on that. And I can trim it down. And then the other one, I see some beautiful pink in there, so I think I'll go with a pink. And ooh, maybe like a yellow, a pale yellow matting layer. Let's try that. If not, we could always do white. And I have enough white cardstock to choke a horse. If I do need to cut more whites, I can. Oh, those are kind of fun. That might be bolder in color than you like. And if so, then you use whatever you want to use. I'm going to grab my dry pieces. The nice thing about letting the prints dry on the plate like that, actually, I think in printmaking in general, you don't really get, um, I don't find that you get a lot of like warping, which is really nice. Another thing you could do if you did have like a print that was really warping badly on you is that you could um, you could put it through an embossing folder and that would give like in part an all over texture so you wouldn't have a noticeable warp to it. I'll use my little trimmer to trim those ends. Let's just get these matted. Honestly, I think when I rebuy base weight cardstock, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to order online. I'll probably just order the like accent opaque 130 pound because it's super thick and it's white and you know I could always mat up with other colors. I have so many like of the thinner colored cardstocks that just like came in those variety packs from like uh, Joann's and um, NAC more back when they were in business that you know I just don't I don't want to rebuy the other thing just because like, I'm not like 100% happy with the quality. It's fine for layering. I think I think that's probably what I'll end up doing just because I really want to simplify my card making process. I just feel like it has gotten so complicated and I want more versatile. So I want supplies that are more versatile and less like trendy, I guess. I just feel like I end up going back to the basics. I like making my own things. I like making my own embellishments, my own supplies, making my own papers. I like doing that. So, but but because I have bought papers, I feel like I need to use them up, you know what I mean? So, because I don't want to be wasteful, and I know I should, you know, I can donate stuff, but, um, I mean, if I can find a good use for it, I like to use it. Oh, goodness, I matted that a little too small. Maybe I can just shift it over a little bit. I think I can. Oh, don't you hate it when you do that? There we go. It's not perfect, but neither am I, so <laughs> what do you expect, friends? <laughs> if you're getting a card from me, I hope you're not expecting perfection because you're going to be uh, quite disappointed. <laughs> now let's stick these bad boys down to our card bases. Are you guys crafting along with me right now? Let me know in the comments or in the chat. We're going to premiere this video because um, uh, it's fun to craft along, right? It's fun to craft with friends. And I like the YouTube premieres feature because I don't have to worry about um, technical problems and I get to hang out and I get to chit chat in the chat with everybody. And if we did this card project in real time, I mean, it would be days. You'd be hanging out with me for days. <laughs> it would not be an efficient thing to do in one go because I got just, just too much going on. And it's so cold out today. It's a good day to be inside making cards. At least today I'm filming this. It was like it's seven degrees out. I just took the dog for a walk. It's windy. It's like below something. It's like 20 below with a wind chill, I swear. It is awful. Um, we got we got maybe half a mile and uh, she did her business and I was like, that's good enough. We're going home. Oh, these are pretty. These are summery. I like the summer. I think that I think I'm like attracted to like the summery beachy colors. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to take our bold black sentiments here and arrange them. And I mean, that's pretty. Oh, that's, you know what? That's almost, can I fit that on there? Just barely. I'm going to have to go edge to edge with this, but you know what? These um, cards are eight and a half inches wide, so it's a regular cardstock piece. And the number 10 envelopes that I use, just regular envelopes, are um, actually like 
nine inches wide. So that's uh, that'll be that'll be fine. Now I can use this handy dandy little Dollar Tree T square I have to line them up. Line up on my mat, and then I can go two little markies up from the inch mark. There we go. These these little T square things are great. I bought some for a DIY project. Actually, I bought three because I've got two I need for a project for a tool that I'm making. And then I've got an extra one because I just think it would be super handy. I want them touching the edge because I think that'll look better. I can space them out well. All right, now we're just going to glue them down. And this is the awkward glue. Oh, you know what, guys? I'm pretty sure I can use dry adhesive. Look how big these are. Then we don't have to have the awkward Lindsay tries to struggle with her glue for three hours. We'll just do this. And then we don't have to wait for it to dry, so then we don't have the Lindsay glues a card to herself before the video is done portion of the show. Give it a good push there. Oh, that's nice. Now, if these warped a lot from painting, that wouldn't be a great idea, but they didn't, so. Now, this would be just as cute with die cutting paper. So you don't need to have these chipboard shapes. This would be just as cute using your electronic die cutter, cutting it the size you want, the font you want. If you want it like a chipboard letter, you want it thick, cut it a few times and glue the pieces together. Yeah, I don't need to. I'm, I'm definitely, the more I'm using these, and I'm enjoying them, but the more I'm using these, the more I'm thinking I'm going to donate. I think I'm going to donate all the ones that I don't use today because I think that there is a lovely daycare that would make really good use of these and um, be nice to get it to them before Mother's Day so they can make Mother's Day cards for their their parents. Or I could donate it to the library for like if they want to make DIY craft kits. I think I'll donate it to the daycare because the library still can't have kids in yet so I think that would be a little more useful there. I've got a, got a big donation box going. Not all of them would be appropriate for the daycare because some are like uh, more like adult craft things. Well, look how nice and flat that sticks. So here, you know, just work it as best you can around the curvy letters. Do your best. This isn't a contest. Nobody's going to be comparing your card with somebody else's card. They've probably never gotten a homemade card in their life and you're just making their day by sending them one. And there we go. So you've got card number one done. Oh, I think it's cute. Now if you want to embellish it, go for it. This shouldn't take extra postage. It's pretty flat. It'll definitely fit in like within that quarter inch thickness and it's it's not very heavy, but it feels good because the quality of the cardstock is nice. Uh, the, heavy, the, weight of the, the weight of the cardstock, even though I was complaining about the printing defects, um, you, you can't see them. You can't see any printing defects on this. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other cards that I printed and that we just mounted, and uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. I wanted to show you this because they're very inexpensive and high quality. These are from the Dollar Tree. They're a dollar and they're about, I'd say, a sixteenth of an inch thick. They have metric on one side and they have regular inches on the other side. But uh, they're really handy in the craft room. So I can put one like this, even if I don't have a gridded mat, I can just put that like that on my card and just kind of catch it in the little nook there, the little nook. And then um, I can take another one and I could, I can use it like this and I can make kind of like a, a little jig for me to line up my letters. So kind of keep things like that in mind when you're out perusing. Um, look for like regular supplies, not things marketed for crafters because often they are a lot cheaper. So I could say I want this to be uh, lined up and I could say okay I'm gonna go a little bit lower on that maybe have it start like around there. Let's see how high up is that and put my little rulers here now, I wish they were a little bit thicker, and I am going to have a little DIY to make them a little bit thicker. Um, coming up, I have, a, I have a project planned for these, which you will see on my channel. Because this, I would like this to be the, the outer edge to be a little bit thicker. So I'll show you how I'm going to deal with that in an upcoming video. So make sure you, that you follow along, you subscribed and whatnot. And then I can say, well, I want to be one inch from the inside. So that's eight and a half inches, so we'll go to seven and a half inches. And I want to be one inch from the other side. I can put this one at at one inch in. 
and then I can space everything out appropriately. So it's really easy and you know for a dollar or actually two dollars if you want two of these you can really um, you know make a nice little tool there that would cost you quite a bit if you were to buy something that was specifically for crafting. So I just wanted to put that out there in case you were looking for something like that. Now I'm just going to glue these down like I did the others. I wanted to use up these other backgrounds here that I just trimmed for a five and a half by five and a half and a five by seven card and I had this like this set of letters I probably got it for the girls baby albums and so I had a bunch left over but this actually has the inside and the outside so I thought I would use up some of the leftover pieces to do a little hello card here and um, I had I didn't have any E's left but I had the negative areas of the E's left so I'm going to take the center of this O and just cut it in half to make the middle of the E and I'm going to paint these black because I don't really the pink there's not enough contrast so keep that in mind, you can always paint your chipboard letters to match. And now I'm not going to use the fluid acrylics like I did on these raw chipboards just because I don't think it's going to stick on those glossy, those glossy um, letters. You could definitely use a, um, you could definitely use like a sander, sand, sandpaper or sanding sponge to, oops, I opened this up, it's a brand new bottle, um, of thicker black paint. You could rough it up with some sandpaper if you need to, if the surface is really glossy. And if you know that you only want, like, say, black letters, like if you have a bunch of randoms, you could just lay the sheet down on a piece of wax paper and just coat the whole thing with black. You could even spray paint them. Whatever you have, there's really, there's really no rules, you know. You can substitute. And then I'm just going to grab this sponge here again, cut the, uh, the paint off the end, and use that to do my stenciling. If you're really careful, you could probably glue it down and then... Um, and then, you know, stencil it on your card, but I'm not that confident that I could do it without um, without messing up, so I'm just gonna pounce on the paint. It might take two coats since I didn't sand it. And then I will glue them on after it's dry, and I just want to kind of give you that idea in case you had some random printed chipboard stickers that you didn't know what to do with. You could even do that for like, um, regular stickers too, but I would probably take the stickers and stick them down to a piece of like um, wax paper or parchment paper or like any sort of leftover like sticker release paper you have or peel off the you know how stickers will have like they'll be die cut and they'll be that, that waste paper peel off the waste paper and then just um, just paint them right on the backing sheet that way you won't have them stuck to the waste area and that's what I would do in that case the raw chipboard paints really easily because it just really absorbs in there. Try to get the edges too, either by, you know, picking them up and hitting the edges like that, or just kind of pouncing firmly down to get those edges. It'll just give you a much neater, prettier look on your card. It's subtle, but I think it makes a difference. And you got the paint out anyway, so you might as well. So, um, yeah, there's just another little tip for you. I started playing with another idea, taking some of the jelly printed, um, jelly printed pieces and then like working them with those uh, vintage lady stamps and um, I'm kind of liking what's happening here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp on this one I thought that'd be cu cute to make like a nest in her head and put the bird on it so um, I want to stamp this here and I'm going to emboss it just to make sure that I get a really crisp design so I'm going to just wipe that with an embossing pouch it feels pretty matte and that stamp just fine so I think we're going to be good and I think this is one of those stamps that has never seen ink. I got this at Martin's for 99 cents, I'm pretty sure, like many years ago. And I don't know why I haven't used it, or maybe I just cleaned it really well when I used it, but that doesn't seem likely. I always lose some sort of like of a, of a messy stamper calling card whenever I use anything. So I'm going to stamp her down here, kind of in the lower left-hand corner. And I've got a piece of fun foam under where I'm working to make sure I get a really good impression. And then, you know what, I think I'm going to use black embossing powder for this one because it's so much stronger. And I'm just afraid the clear isn't quite going to gonna cut it because my stamping came out a little bit light. Maybe I need to re-ink that ink pad. I did the clear there because I was afraid it was such a detailed image. I thought I'd get too much powder on and it might, like, uh, mess it up. But let's just, uh, let's see how this looks. the excess off. Oh, that's going to be much, much better. I'm going to tap the excess off so you don't end up getting speckling where you don't want it. 
And then we're going to heat this. And that should be nice and nice and dark. I think it's really pretty when you have like, this was remember the waste print that we did? So um, it was just whatever was like left over on the plate and then remember I added white paint to the, um, to what we actually no, I added that really, really pale peach like Arteza pouring paint to the, uh, the plate and I just sprayed that over and pulled up whatever like leftover pad pastel, leftover um, ghost print was on the plate. And you get such a pretty subtle background that way that you can stamp on it. And um, that pouring paint isn't too glossy, so it has a really nice finish I was able to stamp on. And there you go. That worked really good with the black powder. You can see it's a little bit more bold than the other one I did. Now let me put my ink pad away so I don't set something in it. You could ink the edges of your panels if you want to. That's completely up to you. And I'm going to put back my black detail embossing powder because, honestly... Your powder is going to last you a long time if you, you know, take care to put it back in the container when you're done. And this is with the clear embossing powder here. Because I was just afraid the black, if I, if it didn't stamp really well or if I got too much powder, it was just going to get rid of all those pretty little details. And this is with black powder, but this is a bolder image, so, um, so I knew that would be all right. So for this one, I was thinking that it would be cute to make a nest in her hair and then put the bird in it. So I thought this this yarn would make would make a cool nest. Um, maybe I should mix it with some other fibers. Let's see what this looks like on its own. Yeah, maybe I'll mix it with some other ones because I think that this might be a little too, I don't know, maybe if I mix it with like a little mohair yarn or something. Let me just make a little scribble of yarn here and see. Oh, that looks all right, but I do think I need another another little fiber. And then over here what I plan to do on these butterflies is wrap the middles with some wire and add some seed beads onto it. So I have some beads right here that I plan to do do that with. So let's give that a try. I'm going to put the loose end to the back. Now adding the beads will probably make it so it's not going to be as flat to mail, so you don't. You might not want to do that. I'd wrap it around a few times first to get the bulk that you want from the wire, and then I would trim it and then put the seed beads on. So that's kind of your last layer, so you don't have to. Um, you don't have to keep fussing with it. And then, gosh, it's really pretty without the without the beads even. It's completely up to you what you want to do there. So um, I'm going to get some more yarn. I'm going to get some wire clippers, and we're going to kind of work on these two at the same time. I think random looks really nice. I just grabbed a couple of seed beads. I have a lot of seed beads, but I grabbed my... Uh, this is this is so funny. I want to show you this uh, storage solution. This is actually um, for, like, test tube shooters, like, shots, like you would... I guess have it a bar. You can buy the test tubes and the rack to hold them and I thought they were just perfect for storing beads. So that's actually from like a, um, a liquor supply company if you're looking for that. But I did see something very similar at Michael's because we finally got a Michael's in our town and they had some bead storage, like a bead storage stand like that to hold the, the little um, tubes of beads which I thought was really fun. I think that set that I got was like about 20 bucks and it had all the containers. I actually bought it because I wanted to do like little candy, um, oh you know like the little test tube, the little candy test tube valentine treats and I did some of those and then I was like oh I should really save those and actually use them for beads because it was such a good storage solution. Alright so I'm just gonna thread these on. Threading beads on video is boring and difficult because I can't get my face right in there to really see what I'm doing. <laughs> I left my string, uh, my strand a little bit long here because I figured I probably would want to um, maybe wrap around twice, have like two rows, rows of beads if they were kind of spindly looking. So that's kind of, that's up to you, however much you want to do there. I just keep it random. I don't try to do like a, a specific pattern because. You know, especially if you're, I, I don't know, I think cards like this, these kind of like um, artsy fartsy cards look a little bit better if they're a little bit more, more random. So I just want to get those beads, bend the wire, come back here on the other side 
of the butterfly's head and maybe do a little row here as well. Oh, I need some more beads. Oh, these are pretty. Let's get this, this, do some of those. Oh, we'll just get some different ones. Oh, these are pretty too. These kind of are like a teal. Yeah, and you know, I gotta tell you, if you are someone who seriously likes to do beading, I would definitely order your beads from a bead supplier online like Fire Mountain Gems or a place like that because I have found that the beads from the craft stores, like I've bought, um, oh, you know, like the bulk packs it, from like Joann's and AC Moore and places like that, they don't seem to be very uniform, like there's not as much quality control, so I would definitely buy my beads if you're going to do like beaded ornaments or anything like that from a bead supplier. It's a big difference because you'll notice the beads are more like the same size and you don't get those weird ones with different size holes or ones that break because it's, it's so frustrating if you're trying to do a project and you're putting a lot of time into your beadwork and then one of your beads breaks in the middle of the project like after it's all done because then it's like well what are you going to do unwind the entire thing like hours and hours of work yeah it's just uh it's, you're much better off to buy from a bead supplier they're not knocking craft stores i just don't think they get the same like i think they might get seconds or maybe craft quality and not like i don't know art quality or what but well, that's kind of cute i don't know if i like the two you know what i think i kind of wish i connected them in the middle Oh, that's kind of cute. I'm just, I think I can just pinch them like that. That'll be cute. And I'm going to go right ahead and put this down on my panel. Gosh, I hope you guys are crafting along. Because, you know, um, every uh, people say they, they prefer the live narration because then you can kind of hear what pops into somebody's head. If something was a mistake, they can be like, oh, don't do it that way. Do it the other way. I understand that, that is, uh, that's useful and you don't miss out on those nuggets. But on the other hand, it's like, oh my word, I'm like, I feel like I'm the slowest card maker in the world. Am I the slowest card maker in the world? <laughs> you know? And maybe that's because I, I'll like watch somebody else's card making video and they'll be like, zip, 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 all done. And it's like, wow, I'm so slow. <laughs> I'm just going to do wrapping of wire on these little guys. Now, the funny thing, um, I'm really organized in my craft room. And my daughter Lila uses a lot of my jewelry making supplies, which I'm awesome. I, I think that's totally awesome because I don't make jewelry like I used to. And so I couldn't find. I have this uh, this flat toolbox full of artistic wire, and the last time I went to find it, and I think I was trying to find it for her, I couldn't find the darn thing. And then it was like a couple days later. I think I woke up in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh, I remember where I put it. So today I went and looked for my artistic wire because I wanted to get some of my funky colored, uh, you know, colored wire. Could not find it. I went to Lyle's room to see if she had it. She didn't have it. I have no idea where it is. I'm sure it's gonna pop. It's gonna pop into my head tonight. Like when I'm in when I'm in bed, probably three in the morning. I'm gonna be like, ah, I remember. Do you guys? Does that happen to you guys? It's so it's so fr it's frustrating, but it's also really funny because it's like I know that it's right there, and I just I just can't remember. It's so weird because I'm like so organized. And I would think it would just, I'd be able to see it, but I must have tucked it somewhere weird because I don't need to get to it too often because I don't often use my wire. But man, oh man, it's kind of frustrating. It's like, where in heck did I put that thing, you know? Because <laughs> I'm usually like right on top of it. I, my, my old craft area, which is now current storage area, I think that's cute because it looks like little butterfly barrettes in her hair. Um, I'll probably add a sentiment to this, but I don't know right now. I'm just going to leave it as is. And then we're going to go on to this guy and or gal I should say so I got this pretty yarn this is little like a little flagged yarn with some uh, almost like a plasticky metallic eyelash fiber in it what I'm gonna do is gather these together and I've got a little mohair over here I'm gonna add that in as well always save your scraps of novelty yarn if you do any of those like funny scarves or you know, projects like that, because if you're a card maker or a scrapbooker, because they come in so handy for these types of projects. So what I'm going to do is just wrap it around. I probably have more than I need, but I like to have a nice voluptuous, uh, nice voluptuous nest for my for my bird. It's got the McMansion of of nests. <laughs> Taking bird brained to a new level, guys. Oh yeah, I like that. I think that's kind of fun. <laughs> and then you don't have to worry if your stamping wasn't perfect. 
up there. So I'm just going to put a copious amount of, oh, I should have glued this down to my uh, card base first, but oh well, we'll survive. Oh, I kind of like having those little, those little, uh, what do you want to call it? Those little areas kind of stuck, like loose. I love that because it's like messy hair, don't care. I love that. Look at her. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we're going to nestle a little guy in the nest there. Oh my gosh. I think this could be the cutest thing ever. I don't know about you. By the way, you you can, I got this from like a Mod Podge kit, but you can get those at the Dollar Tree now. Those, uh, I, they must be made by the Mod Podge people, I would think, because they're like, they're that same color pink, and you can get all those silicone um, things at the Dollar Tree now. They are so handy for saving your fingers so you don't burn your hands off when using your, your hot glue gun. Because you always need to do that kind of like pushing the stuff down into the glue to make it really grab. Oh, I've got a little stamp that says remember. I think that would be really cute on maybe a piece of white cardstock and put it there. Because like, you know, when you bird brain you can't remember. Where's my wire? <laughs> Case in point. Is it gonna occur to me as soon as I'm done filming this video? I bet you by the time we live premiere this on YouTube, I'll know where my wire is. You'll have to ask me. I'll say, Lindsay, did you find your wire? And I'll say, why? Well, yes, I did. Or no, I still don't have a clue. <laughs> One or the other. I'm gonna put my adhesive on my card base because um, I've got so much on that uh, that card front right now. I just need to uh, let that cool for a second. I don't want to flip it over yet. I get generic adhesive for my ATG gun, so I don't feel too badly about using a lot of it. That way, I don't have to worry about things coming undone. I get it. I got mine from Tape Depot, but I think you can even buy it on Amazon now. You can trim it up a little bit if you don't want that hanging in her face, but I think that's just kind of fun and cute. Uh, you'll have to let me know what you think. Maybe you think it's a little crazy. Oh, you know what we could do? I think I want to take a, sh a Sharpie or marker here, permanent marker, and I want to draw a wing on that, on that bird. Let's get this thing off my finger. I don't know. Now I'm regretting it. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you never know. Give him a little shadow. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Yeah. That's kind of cute. It's fine. I think I liked it better before. But you know what? When you send a card to somebody, they're not going to know what it looks like before. They're only going to see the masterpiece that you present them. So, all right. I'll turn the camera on again when I find something interesting to share. See you in a bit. My, my desk has become quite messy, <laughs> but I wanted to show you this card. This is a background from quite a while ago. I think I used some brush -o and some like uh, metallic uh, pigment crystals. If I was like really on the ball, I would link all these tutorials. <laughs> but yeah, there was a, this was from a tutorial, uh, one of the backgrounds that I made. I'm trying to use up a bunch of those backgrounds today. And I thought it'd be cool to add some glitter to this. And I am going to use the three-in-one glue. I have a folded piece of paper around here somewhere to use. Oh, you know what? I'll just use this as my, my glitter tray. Um, I'm going to first actually apply the um, some adhesive to the back so I can just press that down to my card when I'm done. I don't need too much. This stuff holds really well. This is the Beacon three-in-one. And then I am going to just kind of like add some of this... Uh, pretty thickly towards the bottom half of the butterfly. I want it to look like it was kind of dunked in glitter. And I'm going to use glass glitter. I just thought that would look cool and kind of classy. Um, it doesn't really much matter what you want to use. I think I grabbed the glass glitter because I thought if I decided to do embossing powder, like mix it with embossing powder, then it would um, then it would work a little bit better. And I think, let's see, do I want a bright gold or, oh, let's do a rose gold. I think that'd be really pretty. I love these little containers that, um, little uh, on the vine cherry tomatoes come in. So I save them, they nest together really well. They're great for like corralling pencils on your table and they're actually really good for uh, catching glitter too, <laughs> as it turns out. You don't wanna waste it, this is kinda, kinda fancy, right? I'm gonna set that right in there in case I draw, in case it knocks over, it'll go right in the tray. Okay, oh, that's pretty, I like that. Okay, so we're gonna put that right kinda up here upper middle area I'd say and then 
I had some leftover punch outs from uh, my feather cards, my Dollar Tree feather cards, so I'm just going to use those. Why not, right? They're already here. We've got to cut out. Might as well. Let's see. I just want to make sure they have a little bit of contrast before I stick them down. One thing I don't like about this glue is that it constantly um, like feeds out. I kind of want to get like a little needle tool, I think, to see if I can... Oh, I don't know if I can... Kind of help it up, use it to help place... Ah, that's not going to work. See how it just kind of like blurbs out after you're after you're done. Yeah, I will pull that off later. Let me grab. I have such glue problems, guys. I have so many glue problems. <laughs> Maybe I can control this one a little bit better. I'm just gonna put little dabs where I want the stars, little tiny ones. See, I save all those little um, those little die cuts and punch outs and stuff for a while because I can often use them. This one is really stringy too, my gosh. I have such a hard time with this, guys. I had my niece Sarah save me one of those little um, pickup things from like diamond painting <laughs> for me to like be able to place die cuts and things because uh, cause it's kind of difficult. But this makes it quite a bit easier, the little, whatchamacallit? little diamond thing, diamond painting wand. So if you have a friend that does diamond paintings, ask him to save you one, because I guess they send these in like every kit. They have uh, they have those little those little diamond painting wands. Oh, and these are, these little stars are from that Dollar Tree set of dies. Uh, one of the stars made like a row, one of the dies made like a row of stars, and it, they, I'm like, that's really cute. It makes really great confetti. Um, it's good for you know, making a cutout border on the side of a project, but it's also really great for um, for that. Let's see, you know what? I'm just gonna use that glue on this. That way I don't waste it. Sorry, foam squares, you'll have to shine some other day. I don't know if I like the off-center, but it's there now, so maybe we'll add a couple of their little, yeah, maybe put a couple of their little stars in there to <laughs> to balance it out. I was thinking, I don't know why I wanted that off center when I have the butterfly centered, but we'll balance it out. Sometimes you got to do that. Why? Well, you know what? This is a portion of the video where I struggle with glue. Every single card making video, I swear. The video's not done unless I've. Oh, and now these are on the same level. I gotta scoot that in more, push that one up more. Don't want things lined up like soldiers. Hmm. That's too many big stars. I gotta do some small stars. We have thrown it all off, guys. We've thrown off all the balance. But we'll fix it. If you're not happy, you're not done yet. Let's see. This is a clever little tool. I wonder if I could put like, I've got a bunch of, I'm gonna try to see if I can tuck this ha half star right there behind that big star because I got some glue seepage. All right, I think that's all right. What do you think? I think it's kind of cute. I'd send it for a birthday card, why not? Why not, there's nothing wrong with that. All right, you could pull the little strings off uh, when it's, when it's dry, but there, it's got a little bit of a glitter. It's nice. All right, onward. I really like um, coloring things and then kind of just sitting them in a in a bin waiting for that card that I'm going to make someday. You know, sometimes you just feel like coloring and you don't really feel like completing a card. Well, that's where the frames are really nice if you have any chipboard frames because then you can just put them on one of your images and, um, and then have like an embellishment for a card, have a whole focal point for a card really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the adhesive from my adhesive gun because the liquid adhesive, man, I don't know. 
I still haven't found a good a good solution. I need to get some some little fine tip bottles, I think, and put my Mod Podge in it and call it a day. All right. So what I'm going to do is just kind of figure out where how I want to center this up, and then I'll just trim off the rest. I think that's really cute. This would be a cute um, like birthday card for a little kid, I think. That actually would even be really cute for like a new baby card. I love those penny black stamps. They're just so fun to color and they're just so whimsical and cute. And then with a Polaroid style frame, and you can totally make this with the die cuts you have. If you have a square and a rectangle or with your electronic die cutter, very easy to make this out of cereal boxes. Um, I can either put the birthday wishes sentiment below it, or I could put it right on the Polaroid, uh, the Polaroid frame like that. I think I'm going to put it below it just because I really like that detail on there. And um, you can use foam, foam tape, whatever you want. I'm just going to use my adhesive runner there. And there, I used up another one of my pretty backgrounds from last spring when the pandemic started and I was just going through using up, I was in a using up all my scraps mood. I love to use up stuff. In fact, actually, I'm going to use up what I want on the chipboard and I just contacted my friend who was a daycare and asked her if she wanted the uh, the leftovers and she did. So, uh, so that's great because I know it's going to get used so I won't feel guilty about it. I won't, you know, I'll feel like I got definitely my money's worth out of the products using them and then... You know, the kids will have a good time with it. I didn't glue those terribly straight, but it just has a really nice, like, uh, solid feeling to it. And I think it's really cute. And, you know, I'd probably put, like, a uh, like a piece of white cardstock in there with some washi tape. And that way the card can even be reused if need be. But that way you can see the writing. Or you can write with, like, a metallic gel pen. Like, a silver gel pen would show up well in there. Um, so let's see. What else do I have for little images that are already colored? I really like... These little mermaids, but they're kind of difficult to use. I also got some more little penny black critters. I've got a flower fairy that's really big, so I don't really know what I would do with that. But um, I think it'd be fun because some of these like kind of whimsical, whimsical designs I think would go nice. Maybe even like on a slimline card. So why don't we do a slimline card to see what we can do? I think. Let's look at our colors. I think if we went with something for a matte that's maybe like a, a lavender, would the lavender look good? And then we could use some of the littler butterflies, maybe do like a pink card base. Or green, maybe a pale green. Oh, that's pretty. Either of those or it would be all three of those colors would be pretty together, honestly. Let's see, I might want to go with actually a pink matting layer. Or I could even take a pink and add it to the um, It's just such a wide one. This might be too big to fit on there. Maybe like dragonflies or something. And this is where you're going to have fun just kind of like playing with the images. And figuring out what's going to work. Might want to stamp something on this background. I'm going to trim it up a little bit smaller. But it's fun. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle at times because you're like, um, you put, just try something here, try something there, you know, work it around like that. I think I'll fuss around with this off camera and then show you what I end up putting together. How's that sound? Alright, I actually came up with another idea when I was just kind of pushing these pieces around. I'm going to cut the wings in half of this butterfly. I'm trying to get it as straight as I can. And these couple little circle elements. I'm going to kind of piece this together. It's, a, it's going to be a slim line, but it's going to be um, laid out very, it's going to be laid out symmetrically, but it's going to be horizontal, not vertical. Oop. I guess I'm having issues in all 
adhesive departments today. I trimmed down the pink piece so that it would be perfectly matted, or as close to as close to perfect as we get around here. I'm going to adhere. I wonder if I should trim. I'm going to trim just a little smidgen off, like a sixteenth of an inch, so I can get that to be even. I'm going to try anyway. Hopefully that's about right. Ah, close enough. I'm going to tear that down. Oh, I got a gridded mat here. I should try to get this somewhat in the middle. <laughs> Let's see. Oops, hold on. That's my center point, I believe. There we go. That should be in the middle. Put the little wings on each side. I think that would be really cute. Yeah, I think I can just use my ATG for this. It's fun, you know, when you just kind of put random supplies together and then you just force yourself to create with them. I don't know how many of my original background, the uh, last year serendipity backgrounds I'll use up, but we'll see. I love to like take stuff I've colored and just kind of have a, like a marathon day where I'm like I'm just gonna make cards with stuff I've already done. There. Oh, those would be pretty. Let's see. Let's see if I can manage some wet glue. Oh man, look at that! What a mess. <laughs> it's already a mess, and I haven't even I had it capped up. Again, I could use my lines there. All right, I think that's kind of cute. That'd be a cute little birthday card, or just because. It's kind of fun. All right, yeah, I think it's time for me to clean up a little bit and uh, maybe make a few more cards, but I, I'll, then I'll show you what I made at the end, unless something fantastic comes up that I feel like you need to see right away, then um, I'll just plan on coming back after I've got a bunch of things already completed and we'll wrap it up. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, I'm not happy with this one. I love that background. And I put this uh, the chipboard piece on there and I'm like, ah, I'll use my metal stamping because I was putting away, I was done and I was like, I'm putting stuff away. And they're like, oh, I never used the metal stamping. Of course I didn't use the embossing powder either, but for some reason I thought this is a fantastic technique. It was the last time I used it, but this time it's really just not showing up very well, but I'm gonna show you how to do it anyway. I had two sets of letter stampers and one had numbers and one didn't. I gave away the one that didn't have numbers and now I'm kind of wondering if maybe I've never used this before. So this this particular set because I'm not in you know before I used it on raw chipboard and not on painted chipboard so I'm gonna have to um, I'm gonna have to outline these like I did on the top and I think they look really cheesy but I'm gonna show you anyway because I'm not too proud to make a mistake make a poor decision. Yeah, this looks horrible. Don't do this. This is terrible. Oh, I gotta get another A in there because you are, you are A star, you are not star, unless your name is star. I don't know anybody named star, so it's gonna have to be you are A star. That's an A. Gotta make sure it's right side up. Wouldn't wanna. Wouldn't, and it's not even like spaced out well. Oh, guys, this is the last one. Usually the bad, bad pancakes are at the beginning, but this time, they're at the end. I've actually already bagged up all of the... I already put my adhesive away, for goodness sakes. Oh, I don't want to struggle with glue and get it out of the drawer. Usually the bad pancake is the first card, but no, we saved the best for last. <laughs> oh, friends. Could glue it on upside down, why not? That would just be the best way to... This poor card. You are a star. <laughs> oh, I guess it could be passive aggressive. You send it to somebody that's just totally screwed up. 
It's your passive aggressive <laughs> card. These, friends, these are metal stampers. I'm thinking these need to go <laughs> as well, but I'm not gonna make any rash judgment on these. But I'm telling you, oh, you know what? I got another frugal tip for you. So my daughters uh, order clothes online sometimes, and they order clothes from this one company, and every single thing they ordered came in a bag, a plastic bag, and um, they were nice, like, vinyl bags with zippers on them, and, and Lyle said, do you want these? I don't, you know, everything I ordered came in a bag, and um, so I said, yeah, sure, and they are perfect, because what I do is I put, I'm putting all of my shape uh, chipboard pieces in here, those frames and shapes I showed you at the beginning of the video, I put all my alphabets in here, including the ones I printed, because, you know, I'm just done with this project. It felt so good to bag, to bag these up. I emailed my friend, asked her if she wanted these stuff for her daycare. She was thrilled, so I am thrilled, and I can consider this chipboard episode in my life over. Uh, we are done with the chipboard, chipboard season of life, but I'm going to show you the cards that I make, because I actually think they came out pretty darn cute. So this one, uh, I used a stamp that said, you are the and then I just wrote out best with the letters there. I think that's the only reason I use those letters, because everything I wanted to spell out either was too long for a card, or I didn't have enough of this right letters, and I wasn't going to paint more. I was just like, you know, it's just so much easier to make a gel print background and cut out what I want to cut out from it. That's more efficient. I'm never going to find the right combination of things. I'm not in the season of life where I want, like, ransom-looking cards. I'm not, I, I'm, no, I'm no longer sending ransom letters, so I don't need that. And, um, yeah, I'm going to let it go. But I think that's a cute card. You're the best. That's great to send to us a thank you. Um, we did our little hello, and I, I did add a chipboard bird to it. I'm not drawing a wing on, because we learned. I learned. Live and learn. Then uh, this one, I painted the red, the heart red just for a little contrast. I think that'd be sweet for our Valentine's or anniversary. Then I did some slim lines. Um, that you saw me do that one, cutting the bird apart. Cutting the butterfly apart. That sounds bad. Then just a, just a plain hello. Great way to use up those big letters. Um, a wow. That would be a great congratulations. Oh good, make sure they're all opening the same way. Uh, thanks. And then um, I wanted to use up some stamped... I'm going to zoom in because these are little cards. Um, I wanted to use up some stamped and colored embellishments or, or uh, focal points that I had just kicking around because I kind of, I'm feeling the need for a clean out, so I'm like, use it or lose it, Lindsay. Uh, so I thought this would be really sweet. This would probably go to the shop because I don't know, um, I don't know any children anymore. My kids are all older. I don't, we don't have little kid birthday parties to go to, so um, those would probably go in the shop. This one here, I stamped and embossed on one of the little tab chipboard pieces, and that looked really cute, I think. And I used up, and these were using a background, some of the backgrounds I did back um, at the beginning of the pandemic when I wanted to use up all my scraps. So if, I'll try to link to it, but if I don't, just search serendipity backgrounds on my channel. And then I do have another batch of cards I made with the serendipity backgrounds, and gel prints, actually. I'm noticing a theme. This is cute. I'm not going to put a send uh, on, on it yet. I might just keep it as a blank card, but... Um, I can always add a sentiment later, or it might go in the shop, I'm not sure. I really think this is kind of fun and sweet, and I love this aesthetic, this kind of like early 2000s uh, stamp, kind of expression magazine type, like artsy fartsy. I love the artsy fartsy. Um, then you saw me do this one with a little Polaroid frame, and I thought about keeping those frames, but I'm like, you know what, no, let it go. Those kids are going to have a ball. They have so much fun decorating those. Um, <clears throat> this had no chipboard, but I just wanted to use up that Flower Fairy image. I cut that out by hand. I'm patting myself on the back. Didn't I do a good job? You can't really tell because it's so patterned in the background. You can't even see those rough edges. <laughs> Top tip there. If you're crap at hand cutting and you don't have a skin and cup or you're too lazy to use it, put it on a really bold background. Um, I have a video on doing brush backgrounds. That was one of those brush backgrounds. I just matted that. This is no chipboard. I just was using up things. This I thought was kind of cute. She might have to, I might have to put a speech bubble um, and like keep this card for myself, but put like a speech bubble and send it off to a friend when there's something totally weird inside jokey that happens. And yeah, okay, that has no chipboard. Yeah, guys, I've completely gone off the rails with this project. And there, we'll, we'll finish up with one of our chipboard cards we did together with the glitter. Uh, you could have also dipped like a sponged embossing ink on there and dipped it in embossing powder and heated it and then sprinkled in glitter and done that. Um, that would be really cute too. You know, have fun. Use your stuff. You bought it to use it. You didn't buy it so it could be sold for 10 cents in a estate sale after you're dead. So use your products, have fun, and as always, happy crafting!